Alrighty. I think we're live. It just flashed up a thing that said having trouble contacting the server. So we will have to look and see. No, there is no Mac software there, Mike. That is what we were waiting for you for. Because you are the resident Mac expert. Now let me check and make sure that we're actually... Yep, we are. Good deal. Alright, so I'm not sure why YouTube decided to pop up a little warning that said you're not making it, but apparently we are. So, hello, hello. Welcome. <clears throat> excuse me. Welcome to the live stream. I'm Steve, K5ATA. Thank you for being here. Um, talking about some logging stuff tonight and some other kind of sort of field day-ish stuff and generally just kind of having a little roundtable discussion in the chat. Um, first, if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. I do appreciate it. It helps the channel out, helps get the content out to other people. Um, hit that bell so you don't miss any um, new content we release. Also, um, there's an Amazon.com affiliate link down below where I put stuff that is either in my shack or in my school club um, shack or just stuff I think is cool and I wish I had kind of stuff sometimes. Um, if you buy it through there, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does kind of help us out a little bit. It gives us a little percentage. And last but certainly not least, um, there is a Patreon link down below. Um, if you feel so inclined to help support our school club, we would greatly appreciate it. Um, I did have somebody ask a question about getting that a uh, tax exempt status for that. That runs into some problems with my school. My school doesn't really let us put like grants out anymore. It's apparently the red tape has just gotten ridiculous. So basically, everything either has to be bought with school money or just I have to somehow or another pony up the cash so um yeah i do apologize i can't get you the uh tax exempt number for that but regardless we do appreciate the help um field day field day is upon us so if y'all don't mind throw some stuff in the chat as to what it is you're doing for field day um i'm kind of hoping and i've kind of been asking a few po folks on the repeater i'm traveling for field day so i'm taking my my poda set up with me down to my mom's um she lives down in the New Orleans area, and uh, I'm taking it down that way to hope to get on the air because it is potable. Um, but I'm kind of hoping and trying to get some folks to do kind of like a little invite attack. I've had a few people contact me, some on the repeater, some on email and whatnot, asking about, you know, hey, what is it that we can do since we can't have the big, you know, gathering and seeing campfire songs around a barbecue and whatnot. Um, to get those guys a taste of HF. I know it's going to be hard to get non-hams, but, you know, we all have access to hams that are in our club that just aren't generals. And <clears throat> if you uh, have the ability ability to, and, you know, obviously you don't want to pose any health risk to yourself or anything like that, um, try inviting a technician to maybe, you know, operate your station for a little while and see if we can't get them on the air. Um, one of the best ways to get text to upgrade is to get them on HF and I mean field day is one of the best ways to do that I mean it's guaranteed contacts guaranteed high energy and you know just a guaranteed good time so um, if you uh, have that ability reach out to some of those techs in the club and see if you can't get them on the air and check out the chat see who we got in here but first I'm gonna have to go and show it off this is the way so all right let's see who we got in Smoking a Mike, yeah, Mike, I'm going to bank on you for the Mac software. Um, T.O., T.O., I had to drop out of that um, Youth on the Air live stream, which I'll go ahead and throw that out there. Um, the Youth on the Air folks did a live stream for, gosh, it was like five or six hours long. I mean, it was long. They had some great content. I was popping in and out as the day went. Um, but if you have folks, and even if, you know, you're not, quote, unquote, a youth, Hop over there and check the replay. They're going to post that. I think Starling said he'll post the, the replay in a couple days to the uh, Youth on the Air channel. It's not in my description now, but I will put the link to that in there for you. Um, great channel with a great mission. Obviously, it fits in with what I'm I'm going for, which is getting more more youth and new folks on the air. Um, but Tio, I was going to ask. I didn't know if you're a, if your girl won the 7300 or not. They were giving away, so you have to make sure you. I would assume. She did not, otherwise you'd have come in, you know, cheering and whatnot. And you might have. I might have missed it in the chat. Let me scroll. 
Looks like a nice spread today. Yeah, we had storms today too. It was it's kind of funny. In fact, the uh, 5100 that I've got in the car now, it's got the little weather alert, and it kind of freaked me out for a second. It, I was driving on my way to work this morning, and all of a sudden it starts squawking at me, which was kind of cool. Um, you know, I I knew what I kind of sort of already knew. It's it's raining, but it's kind of cool. I guess if you get tornadoes and whatnot, then that would come in handy. Uh, let's see, WJ6F in the house, and y'all, if y'all have not been over to his channel, head over there, check it out. Um, obviously the people with the, the blue wrench in there, if I can figure out how to do that, I'll pop a wrench on you, WJ6F, but head over there, check his channel, he does some good stuff too, so, um, Smokin' Ape, obviously, he does good stuff. Clark, good to see you, my man. Who else we got, who else? I thought I saw Andy make his way in here. Philip Muth. Did I, I I watched you give instructions on how to pronounce it. I think I got it right. Philip Muth. Welcome. There's Andy. T.O. made it. I'm on a Mac typing arm. Hi. J.D. Williamson. Appreciate you being here. Um, but yeah. T.O. is a sub to WJ6F, so... Y'all go ahead and, uh, in fact, why don't y'all go ahead and drop a link to his his channel in there and let folks open it up on another another tab there and get him that sub because he's got a great channel if you're not already sub to it. Um, so today we're kind of sort of talking about logging, not particularly field day logging, although the idea kind of developed out of somebody called me up and uh, asked, oh, Peter won the 7300. Okay, well. I'm just glad some some kiddo got one because it's a great radio. So, but uh, I say kiddo, but I guess technically they're a 25 and under. We'll call them young bucks or whatever, young folks. Um, but anyway, somebody, a friend of mine, called and he's a technician and he wanted to know what he could do for field day. And then he said, "Well, how do I log this stuff? You know, how do I, you know, how do I log in general? What do I log and stuff like that?" And so that led into a a conversation about you know what kind of stuff should you log what kind of stuff do you log what kind of stuff you know do other people log and 25 is still a kid um, 25 is awfully close to half of me so but <clears throat> um, yeah Philip the storms weren't afraid of me I mean they literally they lined up right along highway 6 and it just rained for for hours now the, the good part was we had a barbecue at the field house today, so darn, I was stuck there eating barbecue for a while. I hate when that happens. Um, but it led me to, you know, he was asking, well, do I have to log repeater contacts? Do I? And, and the question is, you don't really have to log anything, or the answer is, you don't really have to log anything. It's just a matter of what you kind of want to log. Um, obviously, if you're working HF and stuff, a lot of people log DX contacts or anything they do on HF because it you know, the collect awards. We're going to look at a couple of those things. Um, yeah, if it, it's a log, it's a log as big as heavy. And yeah, if you, if you didn't catch it, I do have a lumberjack or a logger in my thumbnail. I was curious if anybody would catch it, but nobody nobody commented on it yet. But I was just going to put a big old huge log in there, but I was afraid of the comments. Um, but anyway, so I was explaining to him, you know, some people even log <clears throat> like a I've heard a lot of people on the DMR Worldwide channel, and hang on, i got to go ahead and hit that lifeblood early. Just so you know, I've already broken into the reserve stash of it. It's It's been a long one. Um, a lot of people on the DMR Worldwide channel have started logging DMR contacts. You know, they're, they're wanting to click countries that way, and I mean, that's not my thing. I do it for a couple folks because, like, somebody was looking for all the 50 United States, and I think there are only about 12 hams in Mississippi, tongue-in-cheek, obviously, but he didn't have Mississippi, so I went on ahead and I made that contact for him, and I, I went on ahead and I logged it for him so that he could get it, although that's not my normal procedure, I guess. Um, but we'll start, I guess, with looking at some of the logging software, and we're not really going to deep dive into any of it. I kind of just want to give a cursory you know, overview of some of them. The, the one I use now is N3FJP. I have used N1MM 
Um, and I have used Ham Radio Deluxe. I've even tried um, Ether on Ether, however you want to say that, on the Mac. And I've tried, what's that other one, Rumlog, which personally I didn't care for Rumlog. I don't remember why. I just remember thinking that was a real pain in the left butt cheek. Um, I'm not sure I remember why anymore. And I may, it may have got better since then. But all of them have advantages and, I guess, disadvantages to them. Um, let me see if I can find my daily bopper. I will go ahead and tell you, though, that right there is Old Faithful. Now, that's obviously not mine. I actually found this – go the other way um, – online looking, and I just thought it was really cool. I, ha I have no idea who this dude is who makes these. He makes these custom um, – contact logs and I was like whoa I know a certain child unit 74 alpha who really needs one of those although she has taken the logging them on the computer now but still it's cool to have one um, but anyway like I said I don't know this dude or anything but I put his link down below it's like an Etsy store um, I have not looked at any reviews or anything so you know do all the due diligence first make sure he's not gonna like take your butt money and like you know run to South America or something and hide out but um, that's a cool looking log. Old paper logs, they, they still work. Um, up until this last POTA activation, that's how we logged all of our POTA stuff was a paper log. Um, it got a little wet last time, but that's more because I forgot it was in the back of the truck and it got dewy. But um, those still work. So if you're just logging stuff for your own curiosity, you want to keep up with stuff, there is nothing wrong with going with a paper log. I mean... It works. It's it's been around forever. Some of the ooh, I almost said how should I put this politely? Some of the elder generation, which I am rapidly working my way into, will uh, only log paper stuff and whatnot. In fact, I've got pictures of a I guess he's a great uncle. Yeah, a great uncle of mine who was a ham. I don't remember his call. Um, I didn't even know he was a ham until a couple months ago. My mom said, hey. You know, we found some of his old logbooks in my uncle's house, who my uncle is a ham. He's WA1AUL. And uh, it was pretty cool. I mean, it was like all these – it was super neatly written and everything. You can tell it, he, he did everything in there. So, yeah, but that's not what I was going to say to you. <laughs> so I, I caught myself. I, I know I can say OM, but I, I caught myself because I'm rapidly approaching, and sometimes I can get kind of gassy if you like that. Um, but anyway – those are really cool, and they're cool to kind of pass down. I mean, it was it's kind of cool that my uncle's got it, and uh, you know, I'd I'd really like to have that log just to show my kids at school. You know, some of the the contacts they made and stuff like that. Um, obviously, he, this was goodness nineteen. I want to say it was like nineteen thirty something, or maybe before then. So, you know, most of the folks in that log are long gone, but. Still, it was kind of cool. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with going with the paper option. Um, Ham Radio Deluxe. This is the screenshot straight from their website just because it is not installed on my current PC, and I didn't want to wait the 47 minutes for my old laptop to boot. So to qualify as what, Abe, as, as old? What? You know, I can find coffee that's won six gold medals too, but whatever. Um <laughs> Hang on, since you brought it up. All right, so Ham Radio Deluxe. I used Ham Radio Deluxe for years. Um, in fact, that was the first real computerized log that I used. Um, and I got it I got it free. I mean, it was like a free trial thing you, you download. And I kept using that free version forever and a day until not too long ago. It stopped supporting Logbook of the World. And so I was like, well... Let me go look for some other options. But I had absolutely no issue with that. I just, when it came time to spend cash on, you know, logging stuff, it's a, I, I just, I don't know, I shopped around and, you know, I went with something else. Not, I'm not bashing it at all. It's, it's a great piece of software. I've not used any of the newer versions. Let me try to stress that out. But, I was always happy with it. It's got a lot of the digital stuff built into it also. Motorcycle buddy of yours calls me old man. Well, a lot of people at school call me old man, but 
not to my face usually. So since they're, I don't know, a fourth of my age, some less than less than that. But anyway, so that's definitely an option. Um, Logbook of the World is a royal pain in the crank. It's it's what's up, Don. Good to have you, man. Um, I don't understand why Logbook of the World has to be such a pain in the butt. You know why exactly you have to, you know, submit to get your little TQ file and all that stuff. And it and while it generally doesn't take longer than a day, I mean, it was just like seriously. And then every you have to keep updating it. And I I like what it does. I like that it, you know. It's a repository to store all that stuff, and it automatically links up stuff for awards and stuff. But, yeah, it's it's a pain in the gluteus maximus. Which brings me, I'll go ahead and skip ahead a little bit. Because, let me turn off Mr. HRD. Alright, which brings me to this. Now, um, obviously if you use, the easiest way to do this is just to... to put a native file into into it and it does it for you. But a lot of folks have taken to using this as their means of, you know, getting awards and what like that. Look, I have four of them. Booyah! Um, but the awards are kind of cool. Um, I could fart out better software than... I probably have farted out better software. Which leads me to my verdict on do masks really work for the human malware virus. If a fart can get through pants and boxers, then I think the virus can get through the mask, but that's just me. Um, so some of the awards that they have in the 50 states, um, the, the only problem with this is I don't think as many people use QRZ Log as Logbook of the World because, you know, I've had all 50 states for a hot minute now, and, you know, I don't have them here. So I have 92% of them. Apparently, I don't have anybody in Arkansas. Let's play. With, I hovered over it. Nebraska. I don't know that there's anybody in Nebraska. In there. Nevada. I'm surprised at. I'm in Oregon, you know. But so you kind of. It's just different folks that use it and whatnot. But you've got their little. Curious. It is quite nice, but automatic login. So, yeah, and that's. I, I do pay for the subscription to that because I like having it tied to my logging software, where it automatically pulls up and you know fills their information for me. Um, you can get the DX world thing, and you've got to get 100. This is the one that really gets me, because I've got my DXCC at ARRL through Logbook of the World. But you can see, according to this, I only have 56 out of 100. Um, yeah, no. I, in fact, I'm I'm going to POTA field day combo, I think, this weekend, if if I can, while I'm down there, T.O. But we are, we are definitely trying to schedule some more POTA stuff, but... Child Unit 74 Alpha is actually starting. Um, she's taking two college classes at the university this summer where she has to be pretty much five days a week and four hours of Zoom courses, although we're hoping it's not all five days. The, hoping the professor cuts a wee bit of slack there, but it's going to seriously cut into our POTA schedule. So, um, hey, not bad. I don't honestly know how many park to parks I have, Don. I, we hit over 300... Um, contacts at our last activation last week um but i want to say we got seven or eight maybe ten parked the parks but i'm nowhere near 300 so i'll bow to the amazing dawn um but you know they've got let me see what other awards they have over there since we're here the world continents award which that one's not too tough we've only got six continents apparently uh, the grid squares, I kind of like this one just because it gives the little spot map of where all those contacts were. and You know, it can show what grid they're in and whatnot. So, what grid is that? Which you can zoom in. I don't even know who I got there. So, I guess there's probably a way to figure that out. Uh, let's see what other awards we got. U.S. Counties Award. Now, I don't understand why they leave this one set at, you know, out of a hundred, I mean, there's a buttload of counties that, that should be a little tougher to get. I had that one when I first uploaded my thing to it, so um, I don't even know what that means. Master of Radio Communication, my first photo. So, out of curiosity, why didn't it go well? WJ6F just didn't get your ten contacts. Did you run into antenna trouble? You know, I was gonna use that 
MFJ manual screwdriver antenna on this last one, and well, we, we'll just say we ran into technical difficulties with it, so didn't end up throwing that one on. But uh, we still did did good with the what I call the Batwing dipole. We can't talk about what Abe calls it. Um, but and I was actually surprised. The first poda we did it was just my wife and I. Um, we got up early. We wanted to try it before embarrassing myself in front of the kid, and we just drove over to John Kyle State Park, and you know I cranked up the HF radio in the truck, and there was all kinds of ignition noise and stuff on it and whatnot, and we banged I forget how many thirty or forty contacts in, in an hour or something, and <clears throat> I was okay with it. You know, it was now granted I, I did spot it. I know a lot of guys will go out there and they'll. They won't spot or anything like that. So it does make it significantly more challenging if you just have to sit there and call CQ for like seven days hoping somebody finds you. But um, What is this? I guess you just have to get all 67 or 67 of the European ones in there. Same thing with South America and the World Radio Friendship Award because I am so friendly. I have 293 out of 25, so I am your friend. Master of Europe has has too many islands. Like Gibraltar, there's only one ham up there, if at all. So yeah, I, I wasn't gonna call you out. I was pretty sure it was you that never spots yourself, but you know, I'll I'll admit I I spot every time I go out just because you know I I like it. The kid unit, the child unit always gets the radio first. In fact, I think this last one was the first time I got the radio first, and I doubt I'll ever get it again because I destroyed her on this one. Um, but I, I like her to have basically people waiting and ready. So I throw a spot out there. Sometimes I even throw it in the Facebook group for Parks on the Air. And uh, I like people to just be sitting there like ready to go. So you only have the friendship. It's because you're so friendly. That's why. You're everybody's friend. Um, something that automatically happens when you put a... I'm not sure what you're referring to, Philip, as far as that. So, Oh, Mike's been in here a minute. He's just been enjoying his cold one. Um, but anyway, so QRZ is not a bad option. You still need, in my opinion, you still need a... Uh, it's what you have, or you need to get, Don. You need to get the Friendship Award, because you are so friendly. Um... I thought about you today, though, because if I remember right, Don, you're a emergency di emergency dispatcher, and uh, actually, I am kind of getting spotty. I have to keep getting spots chopped off of me, man. It's kind of funky. But uh, I thought about you this morning on my way to work. You know, before the rain really started falling, um, three horses were crossing the the highway back and forth and whatnot. So I called the dispatch and said, "Y'all might want to get somebody, otherwise, this is going to turn into horse jerky in a hurry." So. Um, so anyway, you still kind of need something, a computer log to put those in. Otherwise, you, it gets kind of tedious, I would think, to put them in. Um, it also, you know, it tells you when, these are all the people I haven't confirmed yet because I haven't uploaded my last one yet. And, you know, you can scroll through just like any other log book and see all that stuff and whatnot. Yeah, whenever K at MRD keys up, you know, it, he's, he's like Insta spot. So... Um, I, I try to stay away from the forums here now, just, well, we'll just leave it at that. Alright, so, um, look it. Alright, so N3 FJP, this is the one I use. Now, you can use it for, I think it's like a month or 45 days or something like that. You can try it out, and it's free, and I did. I tried it out for 45 days, and it's, uh, your call is in where? Ape, I don't believe you. I don't believe you would admit if it was anyway, because... You're the ape, formerly known as ape. But anyway, I tried it out, and I liked it. Um, and this guy does, I forget his name, Scott Davis, maybe, something like that. He does a great job with, with this stuff. I think I paid 40 or 50 bucks or something like that for that, and then all of the contest stuff that comes with it. So every contest, he sends out, like, a little link to download the uh, current cost or a contest log and whatnot. Um, and he's even sent out like instructions for, you know, all the temporary waivers we have and stuff like that for, for this one. So, you know, he's spot on. In fact, I bought this twice. I bought it 
one's for myself and one's for child unit 74 alpha because you know she needed her own um, but I like this very well let me close up these windows so I can see what I'm doing here um, it it ties in well with the QRZ you know search lookup and stuff like that it, it is a little bit wonky at first if until you get it set up right like when I first set it up it automatically was pulling up like everybody's QRZ picture which okay that's neat if you're just sitting around you know playing on the radio but it just slows stuff down if you're doing POTA or something like that and I mean it was like seriously so I had to dig into the menu to find where that is so um, but I enjoy this one it's got some stuff I hadn't even really explored too much I don't even see what I we'll have to figure out how to. I didn't even know some of this stuff was in here. So, um, but as far as you know, how easy it is to log stuff, you know, it's when you put in somebody's call sign and tab it over. There it is. Um, this is what I'm. I'm going to disable this next. That's the the automatic. It fills the comments with their name and address, and I keep forgetting to to disable that. So. Um, I guess it's handy, but I like to put the park to park stuff down in there and whatnot. But yeah, Mike knows everyone, and more importantly, everyone knows Mike. So, um, but I really enjoy N3 FJP. Um, it, like I said, it does upload to Logbook of the World, um, EQSL, which I think is the one that looks like a MySpace site. And I think I have a club log account, but I don't even know when I logged into it. Maybe in. 1996 maybe I don't remember um, but as far as ease of use it doesn't get a whole lot easier than that so that's that's an option there now um, Mikey since you're in here well I guess I'm going to show the N1MM N1MM is another free one and I think that's the one that Kyle um, AA0Z uses for a lot of his contest stuff it's completely free and I don't have any problems with it either um, I just like the simplicity of this one. I wanted mine to be the same that Jerrica's was going to be. Um, no. Well, it doesn't look horrible, I guess, but it's just so wonky. The interface just sucks so bad. But GeoCities. All right, so who in the chat remembers GeoCities? That's the question. Because, you know, I guess most of us in here are of the elder generation, so we probably all remember GeoCities. Um but N1MM, I have no problem with N1MM at all. Let's say that a hundred times fast. With N1MM at all, it's just, you know, I, I wanted something that was simple, something that I could have on mine, that Jerrica could have on hers. I, wa I didn't want her to have to deal with anything really wonky or anything like that, so I went with this one. Um, I didn't realize Cal did too, so. Um, all right, so we're going to kind of venture off into... Never Never Land here, and I'm going to get the web browser going so that we can look at... Oh, did I close it? Sucks to be me. Oh, there it is. Okay. All right, so Mac options. I know there's... That one. Let's see. <clears throat> okay, Mike, so is this the one you use regularly if I remember right that and, uh, there's screenshots in here let me see uh, first let's look at how much this bad boy costs 39 bucks that's not bad you know I don't mind I don't mind paying for something software wise if it's good software um, and you're not going to get raked over the coals with you know next year you have to buy an update or something like that um, says it tracks awards obviously rig control that's another big thing can I control the rig from it um, how easy it is to import and export stuff like that so modern Mac application yeah well my Mac is not modern anymore that's the hitch in my getup my Mac is ancient in fact that's why I had a little lag in in a getting regular videos out there for a hot minute because my Mac had gotten so jacked up that it takes, you know, six hours to process a video now. And of course, it's technically my school's Mac, so I can't really complain, and I can't wipe it and start over. So I, I bit the bullet and bought um, 
move heavy, however you say it, on age recommendations to make videos. So, but so I do remember I I tried this um back when I I think I tried it for free and whatnot. And that was back when I didn't really feel like paying thirty nine bucks for it. And then I tried. Which, Rumlog's got, it's like a cult following almost. There's a lot of folks out there that, you know, they've got their own, yeah, that's it, Move Abby. And I like it. It's a little different than iMovie, but not much. And once you get used to where the different controls are and stuff like that, it's, you know, that video processed in six minutes and 32 seconds or something crazy like that. So, um, anybody in here who uses or has used Rumlog for, a while, feel free to throw your two and a half cents in. Um, like I said, I didn't. I don't remember why I didn't like it. It was just, I don't know, for some reason it was like wheat coffee or coffee with creamer and it just left a bad taste in my mouth. So, I'm hoping you're saying you love Move Abby and not Rum Log because I thought more of you. But no, seriously, I don't. I'm, I'm sure once you get used to it, it probably works out fine. Um, I think it's totally free, though, if I remember right. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this bad boy's free. Which, you know, free is free is a good thing, especially if you're doing ham on a budget, you know. Um, which is something I always have to consider, because my kids, you know, at school, they're obviously on a budget. So any logging software I get them, I'd prefer it to be free, because, well... When you're 12, your disposable income is limited, and getting a kid to spend $39 for a piece of logging software, that's a lot of, you know, Taco Bell tacos or something like that, whatever they're going to sp spend their money on otherwise. And in, in the, uh, all right, thanks, JD. Yeah, so, um, but still, you also have to consider the fact of how much of a pain in the butt is it to use. And, you know, like I said, I remembered it being a pain in the butt, and, you know, JD says it can be a pain in the butt, and somebody else said, oh, and Mike, you know, it's a nightmare, so I, I would stay away from it, unless unless you just like pulling hair out, which I do sometimes, that's one and a half bow fangs, and that is, that's kind of how I look at things, you know, in fact, that's not a bad comparison for for how to put things, you know, how many bow fangs can I get, because I have to buy bow fangs like candy, and, uh, hand those bad boys out and then I have to make roll up J rolls and stuff like that like crazy because we live out some of these kids are 10 15 miles from the repeater so if they don't have an antenna other than the rubber dummy load then they're not making the trip in so but yeah that's about thing and a half so I you know that that's good money right there um and that is a ton of Taco Bell. Not as much as it used to be. I mean, I'm old enough. I remember when tacos were like 19 cents or something like that. But just try it once you get the radio. Yeah. Um, you know, that may be it. Was it a pain in the butt to get the get it to talk to the radio? I don't remember. But, um, yeah, Philip, ham radio and budget tend to be mutually exclusive. They certainly can be. But that's part of the challenge of doing it with, you know, kids at school and whatnot is I have to find a way to make those two get along because I'm working on a school budget and kids with, you know, well, they might get 10 bucks a week for mowing the grass or something like that. Either has a free version that I use for about the first year. You can do everything, but you can only have 30 logs. Oh, so that's not bad. So, yes, I, 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 I guess I probably am older than you. I'm, how old am I? I think I'm turning 49 this year, so I'm getting close to the half century mark. So, which is, I'm fortunate. I, most of the time, I don't look 49 years old or 48 years old because I, I shave it off. It took me the better part of the day to get a talk. See, that that might be what it was because, oh man, Del Taco. Now, see, I miss Del Taco. Um, Del Taco and In and Out. You know, it's. There are very few things I miss about living in California. I mean California, and uh, but Del Taco and In and Out Burger are two of them. So and the the swap meet at Costa Maker, Mesa, where I can get like avocados for like a dime, stuff like that. But 
you're afraid to reveal your or hate to reveal your age. I don't care, you know. But and yeah, Del Taco was the bomb because they were they had 19 cent tacos too. Not that that has anything to do with logging software or anything like that. But um, so yeah, so the free version I didn't realize that you could pretty much use it forever. You can only have 30 logs saved at a time. So as long as I guess that could be a bit of a pain in the butt to constantly be doing that, but you know it works and it. I do remember it being good software. So. Yeah, see, I used to live in Placentia over there, so I don't remember how many miles that was from Coastal Mesa. It was farther than 15, but it wasn't bad. I went down the, what, 55 freeway or whatever that was to get down there. So we actually have a Whataburger here in Mississippi, but it's all the way down in Jackson. And I had Whataburgers when I was in Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. 56, so, so far Don wins the Old Man Award of the day. So, I think I think Mike's probably the young one in the house. I may be wrong, but I think he's probably closer to the to the youngest in here. Um, so, any other logs, folks, use throw it out there. Um, yeah, it's been a minute since I've been on the 55 freeway. It's been 20 something years now. So, but. Uh, I do like, I know some of them, in fact, in 3FJP, I'm pretty sure I haven't done it on this one, but our club, I think that's the one they used last year at Field Day, where um, you can have multiple computers running it, and the logs all mesh together and whatnot. So, you know, the CW guys were in one room doing theirs. Oh, Phillip's got it. Um, does, you know, does Ether do that? Mike, can you have it running on two different computers at the same time and the logs kind of shake hands and get along and so you can see if somebody else worked the station and whatnot? Mac Logger DX. I had totally forgotten about that one. Let's put that one up while we're waiting on Mike to Mac. So yeah, see, and I have the. In fact, I still have the installation files for the for the old free version that I had, and I mean it worked like a champ. Now some of the digital modes were outdated and whatnot. But what's up, Jim? Good to see you, my man. Jim is one of my patrons in there, and I do appreciate it. So it was a uh, does the Ether software, Mike? The question was, can you have more than one computer running the software? Like for field day, can multiple folks using multiple radios use it and have them kind of get along with each other and the logs all mesh together. All right, so Mac Logger DX, is this, is it free? Question number one. Got to look through my teacher eyes first. Yeah, free demo, which means it costs something to buy. So how much is it to buy? Anybody know? Just see. Oh, it's not going to be downloaded. Well, I guess it will. It just won't let me open it. So, all right. So, Andy, you like Mac Logger DX. You know how much it costs? Um, not that most of my kids have a hundred bucks. Yeah, my kids definitely don't have a hundred bucks. So, they got to scrape pennies for a fang, and then more pennies for a Nagoya antenna because they figure out pretty quick that a fang can't talk to anyone. There it is, $95 right there. See, scroll to the bottom. You can run the 15-minute demo as many times as you want. So as long as you keep restarting it over and over again, then I guess you can use it forever. Yeah, 100 bucks. but that's isn't that what Ham Radio Deluxe is now? It's like 100 bucks or something like that. And I was like, hmm. And I don't remember what, but I seem to remember there was some kind of drama with the people who had bought it before all of a sudden – they, they didn't get updates anymore and they changed. I don't remember, but. Um, yeah, there are. There are some free ones out there. N1MM is free. Um, yeah, my you have a ghetto Mac. Dude, my Mac is so ghetto, it's not even funny. But, um, now, I didn't go into the Linux part of the world just because I play around with Linux a little bit just enough to get in trouble. Um, but I don't. 
I don't know. I mean, I I just didn't go there. So not a lot of people have a Linux box. I guess everybody could with a Raspberry Pi. I mean, that makes a cheap computer too. So in fact, you know, Tio, that's that's not a bad option because a lot of my kids don't have computers either. So logger 32 I'll check that in a second John um, but yeah that's that's not a bad option for me to to play around with and you know maybe I can get them to if they get a Raspberry Pi I happen to know for a fact that the school district has like 847 old monitors sitting around that I think they're gonna throw away they're just too lazy to throw away so I could offer to throw those away maybe give a, give one to a kid you know get them a pie get them Free lights. Yeah, I smell. I smell something coming. All right. So let's see. Raspberry Pis are down out to what the Pi Four now. So that's good to know, Jim, because you're close. <laughs> so if I have to drive anything for help, I know where to go. Um, what is a Pi? Can you still buy a Pi Three? I assume you can, because you know what? Remember, we think school budgets. So how much are they? Let's check Amazon. No. Who helps if I could type? Yeah, that's with all that extra crap. I have a 3D printer. I can print that. So, for, is that about the going rate? 40 bucks for a Pi 3? Yeah, what what does a Pi Four go for though? Yeah, would a Pi Zero actually do? I mean, is it? I know my jumbo spot up there is a Pi Zero, but would a Pi Zero be have enough oomph to do that? Yeah, that is a thing, but it can also be useful, especially you start, you know, like Jason um, Cam Four ACK has got some interesting stuff on there for his so. All right, somebody threw out another logger program. There it was. Logger32. All right, so 15 bucks, and I might can get those through a school source and get them a little bit cheaper, although I doubt it because our, our technology guy is an Apple guy, and it's kind of... He kind of looks at me sideways. Come over, say, I, dude. I, you, I've told you several times I would love to have a 64. All right. So Logger 32 is completely free. Do you use this? Was that John? I think that threw that out there. John, do you use Logger 32? Another screenshot somewhere for the Pi Fun. Appreciate it, Philip. That's a frac about a what a fourth of a Pi. Less than. Let's just download it real quick and see. I have good internet. All right. Ooh. Set up. All right. So, as far as easy to use, is it in easy? I'm just gonna. Yeah. Well, too late now. It's already, it's already here now. Ooh, that looks very, uh, you can't see that. Let me, it looks very um, Windows 3.5. Interesting, though. All right, so I'll download that one, too. I remember when I had the VIC-20, man. Uh, and, you know, I had a VIC-20, and then my brother got the 64, and we, we spent hours. I will happily take your your pie if you want to donate it for the kids. I, I have probably three or four of them in there that – well, I can't really take all of them for ham radio because I've got some of them building little retro game consoles out of – well, I say they're building. We got corona out of school, but let's just hit note all. Um, an error occurred. Well, let's just ignore it and see what happens. All right, so – all right, Tio, where'd you say that screenshot was? There we go, screenshots. All 
See, and as as petty or as minor as this sounds, especially when you're working with kids, they like stuff that looks technical. So I appreciate that, Don. Um, you know, kid, especially at that age, you know, they're middle school kids. They want to feel big and bad, and you know, they want something that when people walk by and they see them working on something, they're like, whoa. You know, they like to melt that. I melted somebody's brain factor. So that's. And that's completely free. I'll have to play with that one. But, yeah, it, it, it looks very, like I said, Windows 3.5-ish, especially the install. It's, but I'll download it and play with it. But I'm really liking the idea of getting Raspberry Pis and going that way with them. Plus, you know, they can just take it with them. So, and then somebody else said something. There was another one. Yeah, you're right. maybe a little more Win XP, but you didn't see the uh, the little install thing, man. It looked very. Got to run and get another daughter. See you later, Tio. You, you, I didn't realize you had as many daughters as you do. Apparently, you collect them. So, all right, who else dropped up another one in here? <laughs> Apple IIe. I I learned to program Basic on an Apple IIe way back in history. Uh, who was that? Oh, log for OM. All right, so that's an. I just totally forgot about that one. Uh, features maybe. Let's see what this has in here. Yeah, <laughs> Little House on the Prairie. He's, well, he's he's in the tundra, man. He's like all the way up in Wisconsin. He was like still getting snow like last week. I have ripe tomatoes on my vines and or my plants, and he's he's still getting snow. He's a communist. Yeah, I'll look at that one. I don't see any. Oh, here we go. So is that what that one actually looks like? I don't know. It's not bad, I guess. I have to look at it. Anybody else use this one? <laughs> pretzels. <laughs> Never have too many pretzels, my man. But yeah, that's JD. That's the the teacher in me. I'm always afraid to Google search a picture because um, well, you just never know what's gonna pop up. What was that called? Log for O M. Screenshot. So I've gotten in the habit at school of I just never. I always have to pre plan my pictures because you just never know what's going to pop up. Yeah, his, his stick family probably stretches the entire span of the window, too. Well, that's the HRD log. Uh, I don't want that one. Yeah, I'll have to dig around for a while. So, but we'll take a look at that one too. But like I said, I'm really liking the the idea of going with the Raspberry Pi 3 thing. Because then, you know, I can I can check those out, kind of like my Baofengs. Of course, I say I check out my Bauf my Fangs, and we got coroned out of school, and I have gotten all of one of them back because they're out wandering the wilderness with them, I guess. But, oh, uh, let's see, what else did I miss in the chat here? <laughs> All right, Philip, I used to run Berkeley Software's GeoWorks on my Commodore 64. <laughs> I don't even, all I remember about my Commodore 64 was playing hours of Bungling Bay and Spy vs. Spy. It was hours upon hours of that. I don't think I missed anything else in there. All right, any other logbook or logger suggestions? I'll kind of make a list of these down in the, the description afterwards. And yeah, maybe we can find a picture of Hampi in there. That's dangerous. What's the actual official name of it? 
I gotta find it in here. I'll just put Hampi Logger. Let's see what that comes up with. Mm. <laughs> Ham! Yeah, see that doesn't. We're not even gonna get get into all that until I get the real name of it. There's no telling what I'll find. Um, so Clark, what I look for in a logger is one: is it easy to use? Um, two: well, I like I said earlier, I don't mind spending a little bit of money for good software if it works. But I also always look these things through the uh, the student filter on my for my kids. And cheaper is better. Free is best, especially if it works well for for kiddos and and new hams. Oh, that was the logo. Okay, well, that's. I'll, I'll head back there in a sec. Um, but it's, it's got to be easy to get all your, your stuff into, you know. Um, that's part of why I like the N3FJP stuff. I mean, it's just I tab it, and it, it saves a lot of that stuff from one entry to the next. So, like, when we're doing Parks on the Air, it saves all that other stuff. And uh, so all I'm having to enter is a call sign, and it automatically does the rest of it. Um how easy it is to to set up and get it to talk to like the uh, QRZ database or ham call or whatever it is you use um, you know that's that's not a huge deal really because once you get it set up it's pretty much set up but the, it, it needs to be able to talk to those at least for me because I'm too lazy to want to enter all that stuff in there myself and whatnot so all right so you said that was the That's a GitHub page. So, yeah, so I'll have to, we'll have to play with that one and see. So, hopefully Unbreakable like Legos. Yeah, and that's, you know, the old copy of Ham Radio Deluxe that I had. Now, granted, I could have uninstalled it and reinstalled it, but it was starting to, to break. It started to get funky little errors pop up every now and then and whatnot, but keep in mind it also stopped talking to Logbook of the World because they changed I guess Logbook of the World changed the way it works or something I don't remember and all of a sudden it just stopped working, but um, main things I look for, Clark, are those things you know, ease of use and cost I don't want it to cost an arm and a leg because well legs are expensive so anybody else use anything different in there that we missed I'm I'm definitely gonna look into that and folks that Jim and TO I'm gonna bank on you for a little bit of the uh, Linux help because it's been a hot minute since I messed with too much of it AC log allowed me to change all fields and other options AC log let me Excel. You know, actually, somebody emailed me and asked for, a, you know, where they buy, where they can get it, access to just printed pages they can print out. They just wanted to handwrite it, and I, I was like, I mean, I can throw throw it into an Excel document. You can print it if you want to. I mean, but yeah, Excel that that works. Just set it up and go from there. My mother-in-law is the Excel expert in the family. She's got all my budget stuff set up on it. Yeah, it is way past your bedtime. But, all right, so if nobody else has any, my first logging software was the yellow legal pad. Yeah, and that's kind of the way it goes. You know, you just grab what you got. I mean, that was my log from our net the other night because, well, that's what I had handy. And, you know, it was make it go. So, uh, about how long ago did the old version of HRD... You know, I want to say um, about a year, maybe. Seems like it was about a year ago. Well, no, that's when I I tried to make it talk to it. It may have stopped at some point before then. Um, but it's it's been a minute since it stopped communicating with it. Um, and I, I don't. I, I guess the entire reason why was so that they could milk you for some more cash because the old version no longer worked. I don't know. Um, I have no idea who created the ADIS extension. 
So, well, we yeah, I, I'm assuming Clark, you're talking about the yellow legal pad. It, it that's definitely easy on the front end, but if you're going to enter it into something like QRZ or something, it, it's it's going to get tedious at some point. Um, which is kind of why I'm like, you know, I'd rather have something simple to use up front, and then it automatically makes it easier going back in, you know, putting stuff into QRZ or whatever. Um, but that's just whichever way you want to do it. Plus, that way you have that ADIF file here. I guess you could probably export an ADIF out of QRZ if you want to put it in there. I've never actually logged a contact manually on QRZ. How hard is that to do? So, I right, appreciate that, Don. I need to get going to you, but I want to see how hard that is to add QSO. Well, let's. All right, we're gonna we're gonna get Philip on this one. Philip, just so you know, RHP. Let's see what happens here. Don't worry, Philip. I'll delete it later. All right. So when you put it in, you put the call sign in. It's not bad. I mean, if it's a contest, you type it all in. I assume I can, I can tab through. Yeah, you can tab through your stuff there. I mean, you still have to manually. That doesn't make any sense. If why does it not automatically fill? Well, I guess it does. It just doesn't show it his name and stuff since I'm obviously a QRZ subscriber. But uh, how do you mean you're not sure you're using it right? A pack of printing paper costs 50 cents a pot of wood glue. And don't forget your pot of coffee. And yeah, that's in fact that was the one thing WJ6F that my kid didn't like about doing POTA was coming home after having a you know 150 contacts in a couple hours. And then she's like, oh my gosh, it was just a task. I mean, it was just log and then log and then log. And that's kind of, we want to take that away. I want to make it so that we can sit there and take, you know, this is the little computer that we take now. I'm going to get it opened up here. And it's probably dead as a hammer. Oh, it's actually not dead. You know, we take that dude with us. Oh, look, I've kind of green screened it now. And now we can log it as we go and it's really pretty easy to to get them uploaded which of course I still haven't uploaded last week's but that's I thought it was dead uh, it's never too early or late for coffee JD I, I can drink a pot of coffee in fact I'm gonna drink another pot after this and at 9 30 or 10 when my head hits the pillow I'll still be out like a baby but but yeah anybody who has any other logbook suggestions or logging suggestions or anything Throw it down below. Um, also, I kind of missed it. I wanted to talk a little bit about how people are going to log specifically for field day, but I think we kind of sort of covered that. You know, in my opinion, the best Windows options for field day are, you know, the N1MM logger and N3FJP, whatever you have. And then, obviously, if you can do the, if you have a Mac, you can go with the Ether or whatever. Um, once again, I just wanted to it, reiterate. You know, if, if you have the ability to, you know, reach out to a technician or may, maybe somebody who's not a ham, I mean, but, you know, we know that clubs have email lists and stuff like that. Reach out to them and see if they want to come over and, you know, work some field day with you. Get them on the air. See if we can get them interested in upgrading and getting them on HF and whatnot. So, you know, reach out and grab a technician and try to get them in there. I'm way past my gallon of coffee. JD, I'm way past my gallon of coffee every day. I wake up past my gallon of coffee. Um, but that's, you know, the only the only way to grow a hobby, or this hobby especially, is to expose people to all the different parts of it, which is kind of where I'm going with the ham radio buffet. It's just kind of a quick little look at all, all the different things that are out there. So if, you know, you've got a technician in your club that, and maybe they've never even asked. You know, invite them over. Say, hey, I'm going to do field day for a while. You know, you want to come over and, you know, work some field day with me. You know, it, they might just take you up on it and then, boom, next thing you know, you've got an upgrade and we've got somebody else working on the HF bands and, you know, looking to start creating and get, experimenting with stuff. So um, that's it, y'all. I appreciate you being here. 
Um, again, hit that like button, hit subscribe. It helps the channel out. And y'all take care, and we will see you on the air. 7-3. And yes, J.D., I am a real coffee drinker.